Hi everyone, I'm Miss McCausland and in today's session we are going to learn to draw a realistic human eye, but in the context of Leonardo da Vinci, as he was known for his scientific exploration into the human anatomy during the Renaissance era in Italy. When we know the science behind the objects that we're drawing, it can really help us draw more realistically and understand how it works. So we're going to be completing a single page together, filling it with a few thoughts on Leonardo da Vinci, a small artist study of his drawing and finishing with a pencil observation drawing of a photograph of an eye. To challenge yourself, you could progress by completing a further primary source study of your own eye in a mirror. Just make sure you don't poke yourself in the eye when you're using your motor memory technique. I've created videos so that you can draw with me and work alongside watching the way I compose the page, hold my pencil as an extension of my body and complete the challenge. It's important to set out your A4 page like I do too as you go along so you don't end up squashing your drawing into a corner of the page and making sure you draw it big enough that you can get all those lovely details in. Rewind and pause as often as you need as I'll be giving you lots of tips on how to do this. All resources are on my website, heathermccausland.com. If you're enjoying learning along with me, then please do subscribe to my YouTube channel so you know when my next video is out and click on the links below to follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more. I will use equipment that you have in your house already. However, sometimes I will show you techniques and media that will help you take your art up to the next level, but it's not essential. So you will need a pencil, a sharpener, a rubber, white A4 paper, preferably a sketchbook, but any white paper around your house will do. And I'm also going to be using a brown pencil. But again, if you're just using a HP pencil, that's also absolutely fine. Before we go ahead and draw, I want to give you a small glimpse into Leonardo da Vinci. He is known as the Renaissance man and had a curious mind and a brilliant intellect. He was born on April the 15th, 1452 in a farmhouse in Anciano, Tuscany and died in 1519. He was a Renaissance painter, sculptor, architect, inventor, military engineer and draftsman and studied the laws of science and nature, which greatly informed his work. Those who know me know how much I love nature too, and it's such a big inspiration for a lot of artists throughout time. I just want to touch back on the Renaissance, as it was a really important period of time in European history. It started in Italy in the 14th century, centering in Florence. Its effect was to influence the arts, architecture, philosophy, literature, music, science and technology, politics and religion forevermore. It's thought that maybe with the savage devastation of the Black Death throughout Europe, thinkers began to dwell more on their lives on earth rather than just on spirituality and the afterlife. This impacted the arts as artists focused more on realism. This takes us back to Leonardo da Vinci. He took it to the next level with realism and provided a scientific understanding of the art form of painting. Here are three of Leonardo da Vinci's most famous artworks. The first is Vitruvian Man and is a perfect intersection of both art and science in a sketch. It's a nude male figure in two superimposed positions with his arms and legs apart inside both a square and a circle, which represents proportion and symmetry. The second is The Last Supper. Da Vinci was commissioned around 1495 by the Duke of Milan to paint The Last Supper on the back wall of the dining hall inside the monastery of Milan's Santa Maria del Grazi. It took three years to complete, captures the drama of the moment when Jesus informs the 12 apostles gathered for Passover dinner that one of them would soon betray him. You can see this when you look closely at the range of facial expressions and the body language. Finally, arguably the most famous painting in the world, 
we have the Mona Lisa. In 1503, Da Vinci started working on it as a commission. A lot of the mystery surrounding it was the uncertainty of who it is a painting of. There's lots of theories, but no one actually knows for certain. Whoever she is, she's been depicted with an enigmatic smile using Da Vinci's soft and hazy sfumato technique. For Da Vinci, the Mona Lisa was his attempt at perfection. And he never parted with his painting, even though it was a commission. Today, the Mona Lisa hangs in the Louvre Museum in Paris, France, as a priceless national treasure. In fact, it's so irreplaceable that there's no amount of money that it can be insured for. So, how did he draw so realistically? He would dissect dead human remains and then draw what he saw. It is believed that da Vinci would get grave robbers and eventually a hospital director to get him cadavers to study. Here's an example of his studies. He may have been a genius, as I've already said, but like anybody, he knew he had to practice to get better. That's just a taste of Leonardo da Vinci. And I just want to mainly focus on the drawing today, but I think it's worth writing down a few key facts that we've learned either from this video and what I've said, or from your own research. If I just draw underneath my ruler, I'm going to leave this area at the top to do a title later. I'm going to write Leonardo da Vinci. And then underneath that, in pen, I'm going to write just a few key facts that we've learned. And those facts are that he was a Renaissance man. that he had a scientific understanding he was Italian and I'm going to write the word genius because that covers the fact that he did lots of interesting things including lots and lots of very important inventions way before their time in history um, and realism. I'm going to write realism in at the end there as well because he worked on his drawings were very, very realistic. Underneath that, I'm going to write those three artworks The Mona Lisa, The Last Supper, and Vitruvian Man to remind me that those are some of his famous artworks. So, just like Leonardo da Vinci, we need to know how an eye is built and be able to be able to draw it. Using one of his anatomical sketches from 1452, I'll show you how an eye and a skull relate. I'm quite squeamish about eyes, so this, is, this has been a real challenge for me, but it has been educational as well, so it's really interesting too. So if I was to have a look at a skull, here's the eye socket and the eye is always bigger than you imagine it is because we actually only see a small amount of your eye. So if I am to show you a little video I prepared earlier of the eye, you can see that the eye in the socket is quite large. Then you have the pupil and the iris in the centre of the eye socket. Then you have the muscles connecting around the outside. There's the eye socket. And then when you see me add the second eye, you'll see that there's actually an eye's distance in between the two. So it's really important to realise that eyes are actually a lot bigger than we realise, but they're covered up by our eyelids, as you can see here. And also there's an eye's width in between the eyes as well. So those are the two important things. You can see here the eye socket area being built. And just adding a few eyelashes on there, it's looking very creepy, I know, but I think that will help you understand. So you can see, actually, we can only see a part of that. So if I zoom in on there, you can see that we rarely actually see, if I take that off so you can see it there, we rarely see the bottom or the top of the white of the eye. And another important fact here is to realise that the pupil and the iris always have to be a circle unless it's somebody looking really off to the side and then you see uh, the, the eye turning around the side, which means it would be the 3D eye, but it, it's more of a oval shape. 
as it goes to the side. But if it's a portrait of somebody looking at you, that eye will always be circular. So it's always worth watching out for that as well. So bearing that in mind, let's have a go at drawing the self-portrait of Leonardo da Vinci. This is one of the world's most famous self-portraits. Very little is actually known about this 500 year old red chalk drawing that Leonardo da Vinci did. But what we do know is that there's a lot of mystery around it and the intense stare of his eyes is, is really where our focus is on this. And that's why I want to draw his eyes on this one. So you could draw it in pencil, in a HP pencil, or if you really are challenging yourself, you could do it with a, I've got a Tuscan red here, which is appropriate because Tuscany is where the Renaissance started, but you could do it in this sort of reddy brown or a red or a brown pencil colour. I'm going to start in pencil, just doing the outlines, and then I'm going to finish it off in the way that Da Vinci did in that red, that sort of reddy brown colour, reenacting that. If I use this version, we can see that little bit better and I can zoom in there. And again, everything is in the resources that you can use. And underneath where we've written this, we are going to draw those eyes, those really intense piercing eyes. I'm not going to do any grid method or anything. I'm going to use my motor memory to do this. And I'm going to draw where the ovals need to be using my motor memory and remembering that there's an eye's width in between. So I'm going to start by drawing the left eye here. And then I'm going to draw the right eye, same size, practice it first, the oval, and then draw it there. Now, it's really key to remember that there is an eye's width in between the two eyes. And if we compare that there, if I say that's the end of the eye to where my thumb is, you can see that that is an eye's width. And then there's an eye's width on the other side, a little bit shorter because of perspective. So if I grab that there, that's an eye's width. There's an eye's width in the middle. And then this last one, it's just a little bit shorter because of the way he's looking. That means I am ready for that next stage. Work really lightly in pencil so you can rub it out if you need. Next, I'm going to draw where this brow, his eyebrow comes down, which gives him that concerned look. And then I'm going to do it on the other side. You'll notice all the way through, I never finish one eye. I never do all of the left eye. I'll do a bit of the left, bit of the right, bit of the left, bit of the right. And that's because if you finish one, you'll think it's amazing. You'll, you'll think it's the best eye you've ever drawn. And then you try and do the other eye and it will never be as good. Whilst if you do a bit of both, they will come out at the same time looking really good together. So always do eyes at the same time, swapping back and forth between the two. Next, I've got this line that comes down here and then it comes underneath following that oval that I drew. You've got the tear duct in the side and as always, I'm going to use my index finger here to guide me to there, comes down there like that. And that's my first part there. I'm going to move to the other eye, like I advised before, bridge of the nose there, that there. Using my motor memory to learn it all the time. It goes across there. Then I'm going to go back to the first eye and learn that shape there. Now it might help you to draw the whole of the circle like that. You can do that if you want. And then it's just that part we can see of the iris. This one here, you could draw the whole circle if you wanted. Having learnt it with your motor memory. And then on the inside, in the centre, you'll have your pupil always in the centre of the iris. Next, in the centre of that pupil, this is where it really helps to have drawn the whole of the iris there. The, the pupil is in the centre of that one as well. Now I can rub this out and that out there, that out there, and we've got those worried looking eyes. I'm going to lighten it all now 
because I'm going to move on to using a colouring pencil. But remember, you don't have to. If you feel more confident working in pencil, knowing that you've got that safety safety net, comfort zone of being able to rub it out, then that's great. I'm using a pencil colour. Like I said, it's that Tuscany red um, because it looks like the original and that would be really nice to try and recreate. And I haven't sharpened it too much. I'm going to keep it nice and smudgy because he worked in chalk and that will be similar to this method here. So again, I'm going to use my motor memory to sweep in there. We don't want to spend ages on this bit. This is just a warm up activity for the main eye that we're going to draw underneath. So I want a loose sketchy style for this in the way that Da Vinci did. And I also want to be aware of the tone as well. So I'm not pressing too hard yet, but I will add some darker areas later. It's much easier because I've done the pencil in there. Some of you may have even been brave enough to not use HB pencil at all. Now I'm being naughty, I'm doing lots of this eye, and actually I need to move on to this one to follow that rule that I've just told you about not doing all of one eye at once. So follow along with me. Let's draw this eye. It's definitely that furrowed brow that makes him look so worried. And it's the fact he's staring straight at us that makes his look so intense. And the way, reason he looks straight at us is because of the pupils staring straight out at us from the centre of the iris. I think there's a little bit of a light spot there as well. It is 500 years old, so it is a bit blurry, but uh, I think we'll forgive him that. So I've done that one there. Just gonna draw the iris round. I've got the ridge there. And the eye socket crease is just here, just there. And on the other one, you've got the eye socket crease. Always looks weird if you don't add this on. It starts to look very unrealistic. I'm going to add a couple of his wrinkles at the side of his eye. Wrinkles always tell a story. And his ones here definitely do. I'm not sure what story they're telling. But they're definitely worth adding in there. Add a touch of shading there, just very pale shading, just down there. The um, the robins are still nesting, and uh, I think one of the little babies is just up there. I've just heard the uh, mum or dad robin just hop into the bamboo just over there. Uh, that's what just distracted me then. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to shade a bit here down into that tear duct. I'm not pressing too hard yet. And then there's this area here. Use your motor memory to block that area out. And then you can shade that in like so. A little piece there. And then this one here, a bit darker in there where the shadow is. Blending that out a bit to the white. And then the final bit that I think we need to do is adding the iris, the, um, the pattern in the iris. Now the iris, like I showed you on the video a minute ago, always goes outwards from the centre. So working on both of them like so. Working outwards, adding it a bit darker, going inwards like so. And hopefully by now you've got a very intense Leonardo da Vinci staring out at the page at you. I'm going to press a little bit harder with the same pencil. I'm not swapping pencil colours, I'm staying with the same one. I'm just going back over. As we know, if we overlap and press harder, we get that darker tone. So I'm now just working over it, adding a bit more tone. I recommend you do the same. So 
So like I was saying, don't spend ages and ages on this. Get his intense stare and then we're going to move on to the realistic one. Now that we understand how an eye works and we've had a little warm up, we can have a go at that real eye underneath, underneath this. As always, I'll work on this a little bit more after the video. But I'm going to leave it about there, having pressed harder on both sides and looking that looking at both sides, checking that they're both evenly balanced, like so. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to leave that one for now. I'm going to put my colouring pencil down and we're going to move on to the next stage. The next stage is the bit where I get a little bit squeamish because we're going to draw from a photo of an eye. Now this eye is actually my eye that I took with a macro lens on my camera. And those students who've worked with me in photography will know what a macro lens is and that it gets those really high details in there. And remember, if you can't use a primary source or you're not at the stage where you feel you could use a mirror to do your own eye, then always get a high quality photo. And as always, I've put this one in the resources for you so you can use that. I've turned it into black and white for you as well. And I've zoomed in really close so that we can work from that. And again, you can see all those details on the inside there. Right, to do this, we're going to map out the page a little bit to help you because some of you, this will be the first time you've ever drawn an eye. And as it is, I want you to get it absolutely right and for you to understand where all the parts are so that you can always draw these in the future and draw lots of different expressions in the future. So we're just having a basic eye, just staring straight at us for this one to get used to the anatomy. We're going to start by using the pupil as the centre point for our drawing. And we're going to draw where the eyeball is. We're going to leave that on the page to remind us in the future how big the eyeball is. So what I want us to do is use that as the centre. And I want us to draw, so if I draw, I'm going to use the bottom of my ruler here. And I'm going to, I'm going to go about, I'm going to go 15, 15 centimetres from the side. I'm going to measure naught and then 10. So it's a 10 centimetre box I'm creating. I'm also going to measure five. So it goes naught, five, 10, 15. I'm going to do that a little bit further up as well. Naught, five, 10 and then it's 15 there. Then I'm going to do the same this way. I'm going to go 15 at the bottom. I'm going to go naught, five, 10, and draw that line. I'm going to do the same here, 15 at the bottom, line it up with those two points, naught, five, 10, and then same, whoops, I should have drawn a ruler line for that. And then finally here, remember work lightly in pencil. I always press a little bit harder, but we're going all the way to 10. So it's naught, five, 10. And if I join those up, then we know where our pupil is in the center. I've also drawn a square because if you're not used to drawing circles, having a square can help you get better at drawing circles. So the next thing we're going to do is draw the circle for your eye. If I move that there, you can see it's... So we're going to be drawing this circle. Now, the way I would draw an eye is to practice drawing the circle with my motor memory, and then I draw it on, on here, like that. So I practice that circle in the air above, and when I feel comfortable, I will draw it on. If that's really not feeling comfortable for you, do each section like this. and you will get something that looks like a circle. Have lots of rough lines, that's fine. And then also you could practice over the top of that and see how that feels. Now my circle's really rough and that's not a problem at all. I do know where the eyeball is. Then I'm going to draw roughly in the center, the iris. Sorry, the pupil. Then beyond that, I can see 
in this five centimeter grid just before the halfway line on this side so if the halfway is there it goes to about there and then on the other side it'll be the same so it's about there now remember the measurement system i used earlier i could use the end of my pencil and measure that and then go to the other side and measure it that side and again we're going to have a go at drawing that whole circle practice in the air and then draw it on like that looks a bit like a target board at the moment i'm going to leave all the lines there though today because i want to see in the future how i drew the eye and how i understand how the anatomy works of the eye socket next right on the corner here we have the tear duct and we're going to work in the grid method way now using those intersecting points so i can see the tear duct is underneath here and then above i can see this line here and it goes up to here this is where the eyelid stops and it stops actually just below where the iris is i'm going to learn that shape What I'm going to do is draw all the way through across to the other side, just when I've got that in place, just here. So I want to really learn how the eye looks. It looks a bit like a lemon that's been squashed and just turned slightly. Something like that. And then the underside, it goes to at the bottom just here. So if you've got that iris the right size, you know that is in the right place. Let me draw it to about here. And you thought it was going to be an enormous drawing, didn't you? But actually, the bit that we're drawing is not that much bigger than the self-portrait part. Again, that really shows how big your eyeball really is. All that hidden amazing eye back there. Now, I've not drawn it far enough across so I'm just going to erase that and move it across and again because I've done that reference I know that. So it actually goes to there like that. Then I've got the tear duct down here. Really important we get that in there. It comes down like that like so. Now, I said I wasn't going to rub it out, but I am going to lighten it because it's starting to get a little bit confusing. So I'm going to use my rubber over the top. I would recommend you do this one in HP pencil, especially if it's the first time you've done it, because we're going to really try and get this as realistic as possible. Now, with those lines in mind, I've got the centre there. I've got this here got the other side here and what we're going to do is check it over check that I'm happy with these details because it can get quite confusing over the other side down to here into that corner following it with my index finger up we go there and then into that tear duct now it looks too wide on mine but that's because I can now add the inside of that tear duct just there. So the eyeball, I did fib a little bit, the eyeball actually is a touch smaller than that circle but not a lot um, but it really does show how big they are. Uh, next I'm going to add the eyelid so that's where the socket is and it goes just outside here working very lightly in pencil and then it goes flat across the top it quite often does across there then round to the end just over here somewhere that's hidden by my eyelashes but that's fine then a key part that i often tell my students is that eyelashes don't actually come out of the inside of the eye they come out of a series of hair follicles down here so we also need to draw that line to just here and it follows mostly follows that line but actually because of the angle of the photograph it goes up and almost goes in line 
there a little bit closer. So it's almost parallel there. Next, we're getting there. We've got the shape in there. We're very happy with it. I would now add these lines. These are just the creases under the eye. Again, showing where that eye socket is. Another one here. And depending on the age of the person, those would be more defined, more pronounced, um, or less pronounced, depending on that. Next, I'm going to add some eyelashes. If I draw on top of this, I think that might help. Eyelashes go outwards and upwards. So these ones over here go These ones over here go upwards and outwards. So I'm just going to draw a few in there. So they go upwards and outwards. Never, until you reach about here, do they go this way. And often when you draw those ones, it looks a little bit weird. So you need to be very careful about drawing the ones on that side near the tear duct. So these will go outwards like that. So start with those. I'll leave that up on the screen for you. Remember, like all hair, we need to do it as one sweep, not a sketchy line. If you start to sketch lines like that, it will not look like a hair. That one there it goes outwards again and then under and up and out. And then another one there, just going outside of that box. We're going to leave that for now because we can add more later. And then on the lower side, if I just do that in another colour, goes from that line we created down like so. Then again, as soon as you get to the middle, they go more straight down and then they do actually start to go up over here. But unless you're drawing very, very highly detailed up close photograph, you wouldn't normally draw all of those hairs on the side. So it depends what drawing we're doing. Today we're going to try and get it as accurate as possible. But that one goes in there, there, one there, one there. There we go. Again, I'm going to just lighten that line there because I think that's a bit too dark. Next, it's looking really weird because I haven't shaded in the eye. So I'm going to start with the darkest tones. So remember, we've got dark tone. That's the darkest tone where we press harder and overlap. We've got a medium tone and then we've got a light tone and then we've got that invisible tone which is white so remember to leave the white areas absolutely white now i can't see anything in that darkest area so i'm going to shade that as dark as i can get then i'm going to add some shading around the outside changing my grip so it's the side of my pencil so it could be like that it could be like that it could be like that or it could be like that any of those is fine whatever works for you i'm going to shade around the outside because that's really dark just a little bit try and blend it up with a touch so it's not just a a thick line because it'll look too cartoony so go from dark to a medium tone that's good practice for you with your motor memory technique and your fine motor skills. Next, I'm going to shade in the tear duct over here. Again, with the side of the pencil, just focusing on the darkest areas. It's a bit dark down here. And then it is quite dark along this line. So I'm just going to shade that a little bit there to remind me of that then if i get rid of these funky eyelashes we can now see under here it's quite dark there and then it's quite dark under here really dark there you'll notice the direction i'm shading i'm shading with the contour lines of the eyes and if you look here you can see actually that it goes upwards very gently. You may want to use a blending stump later, but I would leave it for now. 
I'll show you that in the latter stages. Let's just get those basics in there first. Really dark in that crease there. These techniques should all come to you much more easily if you have done the chimp video that I did, because I think that's much harder than this. It's all, it's all very much doable. But I think the chimp feels harder because it's a bigger picture. It's not just one detail. However, as drawing this in high detail is quite a uh, interesting task too. Next, because I don't want to miss out on the white parts, I'm just going to sketch in where those white parts are. There's one there, there's one here, and then there's an unusual shape there, just like that. And actually, I've already accidentally gone into those areas, and there's a light spot there. And there's one here. If I press too hard, it'll look outlined. So I don't want to do that too much. I'm going to use the edge of my rubber to lift the graphite there, lift it off there, lift it off there. There we go. I had really watery eyes when I took this photo because I was holding my eye open for so long. So it, if you look carefully, you'll see all the water at the bottom of my eye. It's making my eyes water now just to look at it. Next, I'm going to start adding in these shapes. To start with, I'm just going to work my way around like this. I can add the wiggly bits in just a second. So working my way out from the center, just checking that all the time that I'm working from the center outwards and missing off those light spots. Then I challenge you to get some of those details from the pupil in there. So we've got this part here. Now it's very forgiving this is because all eyes are different and as long as you get some of those lines in, some of those mark making techniques, then it's fine. Now this really is the first time I've looked at my eye this closely and yes, I do find it quite disturbing. So everything I do now, I'm pressing inwards and upwards. You'll notice I'm still only using the HB pencil for this, even though I'm pressing quite hard and getting those dark areas in there. I'm going to give it a wiggle. It's really dark up there. I can't actually see much at all, so I'm going to shade that even darker up there. And then I'm going to do some from the iris outwards a little bit, but not losing that definitive pupil area. 